Welcome to Frontline Systems webinar on an overview of simulation applications in Excel using our advanced products. My name is Dr. Simo Maliki. I am Consulting Lead and Modeling Specialist at Frontline Solvers. During this presentation, if you have any questions or comments, please type them to the chat box to be answered at the end as our time allows. I strive to remain within the promised time frame yet to thoroughly cover all the materials, sometimes it takes a few minutes longer. I very much appreciate your cooperation. As we all know, the Monte Carlo simulation and risk analysis techniques are widely used across many industries and functional areas. That is because almost every business outcome has some uncertainty. Uncertainty can impact our decisions and actions in desirable as well as undesirable ways. If we own shares of stock, the future price is uncertain. It may go higher, which is desirable, or it may go lower, which is undesirable. Furthermore, you might be concerned with future demand for your product, production variations, delivery lead time, or even future interest rates. The main point is that when there is significant uncertainty, expected case or average estimates are typically wrong. When you have multiple uncertain factors affecting your business situation, what if analysis is very likely to be insufficient? That is because it won't capture all the outcomes and you may be surprised by the real outcome, although you have considered a best, worst, and average case. However, you can model risk and quickly quantify the full range of possible outcomes. Risk analysis helps recognize the difference between the expected value of a decision alternative and the payoff that may actually occur. This tool allows you to graphically show the range of possible outcomes and very often reveals other valuable insights to you, to your management and stakeholders. In fact, we have seen over and over that risk analysis skills are a career enhancer for our users for several reasons. reasons. First of all, you see that as we perform further analysis by doing sensitivity analysis, you will get a good sense for what factors really matter in these business situations with uncertainty. If you are negotiating with another party and you have done your homework with risk analysis and they haven't, you have just given yourself a significant competitive advantage. And finally, as you rise in the ranks of a company, the decisions start to involve more and more uncertainty. And so the skills involved in coping with uncertainty and modeling it realistically become more and more important. Today, we explore how risk analysis and Monte Carlo simulation can benefit you in solving your business problems in uncertain situations and how easy it is to use frontline systems tools such as Risk uh, Solver Pro and Risk Solver Platform to model and manage those problems. Together, we'll review typical applications, including inventory management with uncertain demand, manufacturing with uncertain processing times, and revenue management application in an airline with uncertain number of no-shows. Then we'll discuss decision trees and using simulation optimization to optimize your decisions on the risk. Now it is time to dive in and see how we can use Monte Carlo simulation in practice. One of the key decisions in manufacturing, retail, and some service industry businesses is how much inventory to keep on hand, making sure you can come through on the promises to your customers. In general, we need to have a delicate balance between three classes of costs, ordering, holding, and shortage or lost opportunity costs. 
So in this example, let's find out how simulation can be used to understand the range of possible outcomes for total cost. Let me bring up the Excel workbook and we can review the model together. You can access this example and the other examples we will review today through help and then click on example. I'll show you later how to do that. And this is the, this is the name of this example is inventory management example. So in this model, we have a beginning inventory in the beginning of first week. The weekly demand for our product is uncertain and here we have used the Psi Poisson for estimating demand. Let's double click on this cell. This is the Psi Poisson PDF or our uncertain variable dialog. Then we have the CDF tab that displays a chart of cumulative form of the distribution function. At the right side, the drop-down menu shows various parameters you can adjust. So we have the parameters here, then we have the statistics, or you have the percentiles and other chart options. So let's close this. Here at the right side, let me increase the size a little further. Okay, we have some other problem assumptions. We may receive shipment and we face a two-week delivery lead time. The ending inventory of this week would be the beginning inventory of uh, next week. And then here we calculate the holding cost, uh, the lost uh, sales cost, and uh, order cost, holding cost, and then the opportunity cost. And then we calculate the total cost in Q14. Now let's run one simulation by clicking on simulate run once. We just ran a thousand Monte Carlo trials where on each trial we have a different randomly sampled value for demand for every week. Then we calculated total cost of inventory. This frequency chart shows us the distribution of all possible outcomes for our total costs. This shows us what happens for a specific policy of order quantity and the order point. You could change these numbers and read on the simulation and see if there is a better outcome. Let me quickly walk, you, quickly walk you through these tabs. So we have the frequency chart, then we have the cumulative frequency, the reverse, then the sensitivity tab which displays a tornado chart showing you which input has the most impact on the total cost. And then you can verify more information on scatter plots. And then also we have other, the drop down menu at the right pane. So, Want to save the changes? Yes, that's fine. Okay, so let's go back to our slides. We just looked at a typical, typical Monte Carlo simulation application. Now, in this slide, I want to share with you a review of what Monte Carlo simulation actually is. It is a flexible technique for modeling a real system in which uncertainty is a key factor. Monte Carlo simulation uses repeated random sampling to represent uncertainty. With appropriate sampling, outputs are representative of results from all possible combinations of uncertain inputs. For a given decision, which are values of inputs under your control, simulation describes the outcomes and the possibilities that these outcomes will occur. Now let's look at another application. This is a small part manufacturing example. A machine shop, machine, a machine component is to be manufactured at a production shop. It requires two different processes, drilling and grinding, which are uncertain. And the goal here is to calculate the number of components that could be manufactured in a workday consisting of eight hours. So let me open the workbook for you.
The processing time for drilling here is modeled using a psi normal in cell C2. As I hover over it, you can see the distribution, but let me double click on it. this cell. Okay. Since the processing time can never be less than zero, we have used the psi truncate function to restrict the drilling time to be always greater than zero. So you can either use psi truncate as an argument of the function, or an easier way is actually uh, through the options in parameter section, like lower cutoff, and it's zero. Let me close this. The processing time for grinding is, mo is modeled in cell B3, and this, is, uh, this has been modeled using the psi log logistic function. So let me double click and show you this function. Total number of components produced in a day is computed in cell C8. Then in cell C9, the average number of components manufactured using the Simon function, we calculate the uh, average uh, number of components. So we do this with a mean function. Then we have the standard deviation of the number of components produced in a day using the size standard deviation. And then, if you would like to, for example, know the chance of producing at least 50 components a day, you can calculate this using the Psi target function. We have done this here in cell C11. Now, let's run one simulation and verify the results. Here are the results, a histogram of the number of components produced. Let me close this. Now let's look at another example. This is an airline revenue management example. There are people that have tickets on a flight and will not show up, and they like to reuse those tickets on a subsequent flight. So there is always an incentive for airlines to overbook a flight. Here, you're looking to understand the range of possible outcomes for total revenue given what can happen with no-shows? Let's review the model in Excel. Here's the model. Before reviewing this example, let me walk you through our tool and some of the features that we will be using. Anytime you install one of our products, after installation, the program will be loaded as an add-in in Excel, and you will see the ribbon appear. Here we're using Resolver Pro, and this is Resolver Pro ribbon. As you can see, first thing is model. With clicking on the model tab, it hides or displays the task pane. In simulation model tab, you can set up simulation models. You can click on distribution button to access a range of predefined probability distributions. Discrete, custom, or even certified. Using correlate, you can define correlations or you can use result button to compute statistics, risk measures, range values, or six sigma matrix for your uncertain functions. Then we have the parameter tab that allows you to, uh, provides you with option to run multiple parameter simulations. And we will practice that today. Solve Action tab allows you to run simulation models. Then we have Analysis tab. You can analyze the results, create reports, and charts. Tools tab allow you, uh, allow, enables you to create decision trees, fit distributions, and examine simulation results. Also, it has this Publish button that allows you to publish your models for use and distribution on the web. We have a Risk Solver app. It is free and it is available both in Excel Online and Google Sheets. So you can click on Publish after developing your model and then share it with your um, um, business partners. Okay, let's explore the Help tab. Here you can display online help, open examples or an online tutorial, access user and reference guides and check your license status and more. Now the task pane. The model tab 
allows you to view the model in outline form and optionally edit model elements in place. Platform tab is next. Here you can view or change the platform options such as number of simulations to run. Then we have engine tab. Here you can review and select simulation options for risk solver engine such as the method for random number generation and so on or sampling method. And then the output tab allows you to view a log of simulation messages. And then in the output, you can actually clear this, select this button to clear the output results. Let's click on Model tab. Back to our example. So you can access this example again from click, uh, by clicking on Help and then click on Examples and then choosing Monte Carlo simulation examples. This slide has 100 seats and tickets are 200 per seat. There are other assumptions for overbooking compensations and no show sure refund. The uncertain quantity in this model is the number of no-shows. So we should model this with an uncertain variable. Here in cell C7, we are estimating this number and rounding it in cell C6. Let me double click on C7. We have used a scilog normal distribution. In C15, we calculate the total revenue. And then in C16, using the Simon function, we calculate the expected total revenue. So we have a distribution for number of no-shows, the side log normal. How would we arrive at an appropriate distribution for number of no-shows? For an airline, we may have some historical data. This might apply to your business situation as well. So here I have this historical data and the number of no-shows from different occurrences of this flight. Now we are going to fit an analytical distribution to this historical data. So if you are not sure what distribution to use, you can use distribution wizard to help you choose an analytic distribution that fits the historical data. Let me show you how. Let's select the data first and then click on distributions and select distribution wizard. Let's see what uh, this dialog says. Do we have historical or observed data for this uncertain variable? Well, yes, we do. So let's select yes. And then, now we need to enter or select the range of cells containing the values. And since I have initially selected the data, it automatically identifies the range of observations. Let's click on next. Now it is asking if our data is continuous or discrete. Let's just continue, just for illustration purposes. I'm just overriding the selection. Let's click on Next. Now we have different choices to fit the data or resemble data, for example. Let's choose Fit the Data to fit an analytic distribution to our historical data for number of notions. So let's click on Next. Now the Fit option dialog appears. Please note that there is a fit, fit, uh, fit button on the ribbon, so we could directly go here, but the distribution with us is a step-by-step -step help if you're not familiar with the tool. Now, uh, let's again select continuous and click on fit. Risk Solver computes and displays a ranked list of candidate fitted distributions. A ranked list of candidate distributions that actually fit our data. And you can see it has chosen the Scilog normal and as the best fit to this historical data. In the right side, you can see that this distribution has a mean of 10 tickets and the standard deviation is about six tickets out of a hundred tickets. This is based on the number of tickets sold and we are not overbooking. 
In a minute, we are going to change that and, and allow more tickets to be sold. So what does that mean for the number of no-shows? If we think about it, as we sell more than 100 tickets, well, we expect the number of no-shows to go up as well. So we won't use this fitted distribution. Instead, we want to create a distribution based on this that depends on the number of tickets sold, and that is what we actually have done in the worksheet. So let me show you how we have done this. No, we don't want to accept this with a distribution. Okay. So we have the Scilog normal distribution, and you can see. Uh, let me move this so you can see C11 is our ticket sold. In this right side, you can see that the mean is 10% of the number of tickets sold, C11, and the standard deviation is 6% of the number of tickets sold. This provides us with a good model for this business situation. Let me close this. Now we can run one simulation. Click on Simulate, Run Once. And here are the results. You can manually change these bars. Now, it is natural to ask how sensitive the total expected revenue is to the changes in number of tickets sold. To answer this question, Risk Solver has the capability to allow us to ask what if and run a new simulation on each change. To turn on this feature, which is called Interactive Simulation, you can simply click on this light bulb on the ribbon. It will light up, and very quickly, your first Monte Carlo simulation is complete 1,000. Monte Carlo simulation trials, the default number, will be executed each time we change the spreadsheet. Now, we can play what if with the simulation model we have. Just before that, let me show you how we can put a marker on this chart to have a reference point. In the right side, let's click on markers. Let's choose and click on this button to add a marker. I'm going to add this marker at the 19,000 reference point. And I want to change the color to red. Now let's click Apply. We don't need this right thing, so let me minimize this right side and move this chart so you can see the results. Okay. Now, I want to show you if I manually change the value in cell C11, number of tickets sold, the chart will get updated, will get updated and we can see the range of outcomes. So, let's try by changing the number of tickets to 110. The charts get updated. The results show that the expected revenue in cell C16 went up. So on average, the balance between overbooking compensations and number of no-shows is working toward our favor. Now, let me show you how we can change the number of trials from 1,000 to 10,000. There's a shortcut on the ribbon, so let's just add one zero here. Okay, now we have... 10,000 trials, and you can see the spreadsheet immediately gets updated. So 10,000 Monte Carlo simulation trials will be done each time we change the spreadsheet. Now let's try 120 tickets. And you can see the results. Let me move this part so you can see. Okay. Well, looks like the expected revenue might have gone up. Well, but it is hard to tell if we have gone too far with 120 tickets. But let me show you, we can try 130 or 140. Therefore, if you are seeking insights about what matters in this model, interactive simulation lets you explore that much the same way as an ordinary what-if spreadsheet. You can ask what if with uncertainty, just like in the spreadsheet, and you are getting a new simulation every time you change the spreadsheet where each trial is a recalculation of the spreadsheet. 
Okay, let's turn off uh, interactive simulation. We have done interactive simulation enough times to get used to the model. But if now you would like to automate that, what you need to do? The point is we do not need to sit there and change the parameters ourselves each time. We have a tool for that. This is called parametric simulation technique. Let me show you how we can implement that for this model. Let's close this chart and we don't need the changes. Okay. So let's select the number of tickets sold and then click on parameters simulation. Now, to change it from 100 to 150, for example, let's enter 100 in the lower bound and 150 in the lower upper bound and click on OK. In the Model tab, you can see that this parameter is now added. To run a simulation once for each value of the parameter we wish to test, we need to change the number of simulations. So let's see how we can do this. Click on Platform tab. Since we want to test all possible values of the tickets sold between 100 and 150, we can set the number of simulations to 51. With 51 simulations, we are going to run a simulation for 100 tickets, another for 101, all the way to 150. So, and then uh, each simulation will be 10,000 Monte Carlo trials, since we just changed the number of trials from 1,000 to 10,000. So when we run this, we will actually be running 510,000 Monte Carlo trials. So let's change this to 51 instead of 1 in the Platform tab. Now let's go to Simulate, Run Once. That's it. Here are the results. We are looking at a frequency chart for simulation number 51 but you can look at different each individual simulation result by easily changing the simulation drop-down selection in this chart and review the frequency chart for simulation number 47 or maybe uh, 14 or 1. Let's close this. The worksheet will initially display values for the last Monte Carlo trial of the last simulation performed but uh, you can easily display any trial from any simulation by changing this selection. So here we have in the tools tab, we have simulation number, and then you can use the trial number to um, go from, uh, you can cycle through individual Monte Carlo trials. And you can see the worksheet gets updated. So this is how we change things on spreadsheet. First with simulation index, you can go from one simulation to another, and then with trial arrows, you can cycle through them to, to through the individual Monte Carlo trials. Also, you can look at all simulations to get, uh, together using one of the several reports or charts. So in the, for this practice, let's use charts. Click on charts. I want to show you how the results varies across all 51 simulations with uh, using trend chart. Go to multiple simulations and choose trend. Now, let's click on this first button to select all 51 simulations and click OK. Risk Solver draws the trend chart showing the behavior of our total revenue across all 51 simulations. Let me increase this size. Okay. This blue line is the mean value of revenue, the 75 percentile and 90 percentile. And we can see that as we sell more tickets, over booking our flight, our revenue goes up, but eventually it peaks out because we are paying too much in overbooking compensations. So we can get some insight right now and we can see that best number of tickets to sell is somewhere around 116, 117 tickets. Let me close this chart, bring our slides. We just went over these slides using what if with interactive simulation. Now, here's a summary of steps to apply the Monte Carlo method. 
you can start with constructing an ordinary what-if spreadsheet model as you have always done. Then you would need to identify uncertain inputs and specify probability distributions. Excuse me. Now on to our next topic, decision trees. If you are faced with multiple stage decisions and uncertain outcomes at each stage, decision tree is the right choice for you to develop an optimal strategy. The detailed steps on building a decision tree is available in the user guide and therefore let's skip it for now and review an advanced application of decision tree in various scenarios. I want to show you that how you can actually access this example. So let's open one of previous workbooks. In the Risk Solver Pro ribbon, click on Help, click on Examples. In this workbook, we have access, uh, hyperlink access to all available examples. We want to look at decision tree examples, so let's click on that. Now let's click on Grand Decision Analysis. And I would like to increase the size so you can, oh, let's say, I think this is good. Okay, here's the tree. A small firm owner is considering whether or not to apply for an $85,000 research grant by submitting a proposal. Let me show you how you can highlight the best decision strategy by selecting a decision tree, highlight, and then highlight best. Okay. The first decision node is whether or not to submit the proposal and that submitting the proposal will cost $5,000. If a proposal is submitted, then we encounter an event note showing a 50% chance of receiving grant and a 50% chance of not receiving the grant and uh, leading to a net loss of 5,000. If he is awarded the grant, he would then need to decide whether to use microwave, cellular or infrared communication technology. He has to spend money in research and development, but he doesn't know exactly what the R&D cost will be. So each of the three technology options has an event node representing the best case <coughs> or the worst case. Excuse me. <coughs> the best case or lowest or the worst case and highest uh, cost that might be incurred. According to the best strategy, Colin Green, he should submit a proposal because the expected value of this decision is $13,500 and the expected value of not submitting the proposal is zero. This also indicates that if he received the grant, he should pursue the infrared communication technology because the expected value of this decision $32,000 is larger than the expected value for the other technologies. Therefore, the optimal strategy is to submit the proposal and use the infrared technology. However, before implementing the optimal decision to submit a grant proposal as suggested by this analysis, it would be wise to consider how sensitive the recommended decision is to changes in values in the decision tree. For example, he assumed a 50-50 chance of receiving the grant. What if only a 30, 20 or 10 percent chance exists of receiving the grant? Should they submit the proposal or not? In the next example, we are using an Excel data table to analyze how the optimal decision strategy changes in response to two simultaneous changes in the probability estimates. Let me increase the size so you can see the two-way data table. 
Okay, maybe more. Okay. So this is our two-way data table. What we are doing here is essentially sensitivity analysis on the decision tree and on the decision choices we would make. And so we have created this strategy table by using the standard Excel data table. In W16, we have added a formula, which is essentially saying, if our decision to submit a proposal is yes, then we should choose the best choice shown in K27 and capture that value. And then you can see the table function is array entered. The strategy table makes it clear that this solution is relatively insensitive to changes in the probability of receiving the grant. However, if the probability of encountering high infrared R&D costs increases, the preferred strategy quickly switches to the cellular technology alternative. Therefore, the decision maker might want to give closer attention to the risk of, risks of encountering high infrared R&D costs before implementing this strategy. Now, instead of simply varying parameters, we can use the power of simulation to consider many more possibilities. So let's click on exploring decision risk in the next workbook, another advanced version of this example. However, you don't need to really worry about all these details. As I showed you, you can go to help examples and examine them later if you download a free trial and access all these examples. So the main change in this example is that we have added numerous distributions both for the probabilities of certain events happening as well as the costs associated with certain outcomes. In addition, we have built a table using several psi functions, which allow us to better understand the decision with the highest overall expected value as well as a way to look at results for individual trials. Now let's run one simulation by clicking on simulate run once. Okay, we get all the results, but we want to focus on AA16. So let me double click on this chart and get rid of the other ones. I'm going to close this so you can see everything together. Okay. This is the frequency of the choice of one of the four strategies related to cell AA16. There are four decision alternatives and we have numbered them one through four. Here you see that while a strategy two may overall have the highest expected value, that was only the case across about one third of the trials. Fairly close behind it is a strategy three. This tells us it may be worth looking into the distribution of results across each strategy to see if we are actually more comfortable with another strategy given potential downside in some outcomes. This is a slide of the example we just reviewed. Okay, now on to our third topic. This is about how you can make best possible decisions in situations where you have risk and uncertainty. Here, we will use optimization capabilities. In these type of problems, we have uncertain variables. You can determine them with asking what external factors are not under your control. We will also have decision variables and we can determine them by asking what factors are under our control. The next component is the objective function. We want to maximize, uh, maximize our expected revenue, for example. You can determine objective with asking what measures are we trying to optimize. And typically, you have constraints and you can determine them by asking what restrictions limit our choice of decision variables. Now that we've talked about this, let's go back to our airline revenue management model. We want to turn this into an optimization model still with the simulation. Okay. Let's 
since we need the optimization features, we are going to, uh, and we are going to use simulation optimization, we need to change the product because Risk Solver Pro doesn't allow that. Let me show you how you can do that, and if you have a trial, you can do that yourself. Click on Help, Change Product, the first option. Here you can see that Risk Solver Pro is selected. Now we need to choose Risk Solver Platform. Click OK. This product will allow us to perform conventional optimization, Monte Carlo simulation and simulation optimization, and also much more. When you are using a free trial of our software, you can do this yourself. And you can see that now we have simulation model, optimization model components, decisions, constraints, ob uh, objective, and some other tools that are added like um, sub action for optimization. Okay. Now let's define our optimization problem. We want to define cell C11, number of tickets sold, as our decision variable. Let me first get rid of the, this parameter function. Now let's select the cell C11 on the worksheet. Now click on Decisions button. And you can see immediately, oh, I, think I, did, I did it wrong, so let me delete this. I should choose C11, click on Decisions, and you can see C11 is added as our normal decision variable. So you can see that Model Tab is a good way for us to check that we are, we are defining the correct, uh, we are selecting correct cells and defining our optimization model. Uh, then we want to maximize the expected value of total revenue the average value across all simulations. To define the objective, let's select C16, which is assignment of our total revenue or our expected revenue, and then click on objective and max normal to define it as a normal objective to be maximized. And you can see C16 is our objective to be maximized. Now we need to change the number of simulations back to one. If you recall, we changed it to 51. And you can see now in the top we have the optimization model uh, options. So let's change the simulation back to one. Now we can solve this model with clicking on optimize. This is a guided mode, a step-by-step -step help to help you get more information about your model. Let's click on continue it and then we get the results, optimal solution. As we explored alternatives in this optimization, we decided that we should sell about 117 tickets. This is consistent with our parametric simulation trend chart where that reflects the balance between no-shows and overbookings where we can earn the most revenue. This was an example of simulation optimization. As I mentioned, you can do much more using our tools when you want to optimize uncertain situations and you can refer to our user guide to explore the stochastic optimization chapter. And the easiest way to, uh, to access user guide is by clicking on help and then user guide and it's the third one, user guide. Let's go back to our slides. A few important points regarding the paybacks of risk analysis. Monte Carlo simulation helps to evaluate the impact of uncertainty in a business situation. The simulation approach is more realistic than give me a single number. With the goal of identifying the best decision involving multiple stage decisions and uncertain outcomes at each stage, decision tree helps you develop an optimal strategy. This is much better than ad hoc decisions as you go. Simulation optimization helps you determine the best way to allocate resources in the presence of uncertainty. This will allow you to save money while hedging for risk. During this session, we started with Risk Solver Pro and then Risk Solver Platform. We showed that what you can do with Risk Solver Platform for simulation optimization. These are professional level products and we have more. You can upgrade to more powerful platform level products like Analytics Solver Platform. Our risk solver products are by far 
the fastest Monte Carlo simulation products in Excel, often 10 times faster than competitor products. This matters when you are performing advanced analysis, advanced analysis such as multiple parameter simulations or simulation optimization or what-if analysis with interactive simulation as we practice today. This is still talking about simulation and decision tree. Frontline whole product line contains a much broader area of analytics. In this full picture, you can see that it includes forecasting, text mining, data mining, simulation and risk analysis, decision trees, and conventional and stochastic optimization. An analytics software platform is a complete tool set for descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics for your problems of any size. Our wide-ranging product line empowers you to perform analytics on the web and desktop spreadsheets, also web, server, and desktop applications in any scale. Now you might be asking, what is the next best step to begin? If you have not, please register at our website for free. This allows you to access simulation tutorials, our downloadable user guides, example models, like the ones we have been showing here today. Furthermore, it allows you to download a free trial at any time, whenever you are ready. Try this yourself. After installation, go to example models to help on the ribbon, click on examples. And during this trial period, you have full technical support. You can ask questions. Email me at consulting at solver.com and give us a call. We have this specific number only for your questions, 775-832-0123. Um, Thank you very much. Nice time for questions. Uh, let me see.